Okay, so uh, we will start uh, working on this review. And uh, but before we officially start, I uh, would like to go over some key points. Uh, the only new materials that we have uh, for this test, for this upcoming test, it's going to be the, uh, the graphs of um, absolute value function. And so uh, before we officially start, I would like to go over the key points uh, to write equations of absolute value functions and also to draw absolute value functions. Uh, there are three key points here, and, uh, and there are three key points that would, uh, that would make you more familiar with the writing and drawing of absolute value functions. So the first one, it's going to be the, uh, well, actually all three of them will be the identification of the shapes. And so let's start with the first one. Uh, the first one is pretty straightforward. Uh, the first one is going to be the fact that uh, whether you are seeing a, a right side up V shape or an upside down V shape. Okay. So, uh, so you have to tell between these two and these two are very easy to tell. So take a quick glance at the graph and you can tell yourself which way it uh, opens up. Uh, does the V uh, opens up upward uh, or does the uh, V goes uh, opens downward? Um, the, uh, yeah, does the uh, graph open downward? So the reason why this is uh, important is because uh, for the, um, uh, if it's right side up, that means we have a positive A value. Okay, positive A value, which we don't really need to do anything much about it. Uh, but if it opens a downward or like uh, having a, a upside down V shape, then it is going to have a negative A value. Now, if you are unsure about the, uh, uh, the A values that I'm talking about here at the moment, uh, just a quick reminder that we have this uh, equation, which is uh, f of x, uh, which in this case, we will go ahead and uh, signify the, uh, the, kind, uh, the absolute value function. It's going to be a, and then absolute value, uh, b, parentheses, x minus c, close uh, absolute value, uh, plus d. So the A, B, C, D values are there to guide us uh, in terms of uh, how the graph should look like, or based on how it looks, then we can capture the uh, equation very easily. Okay. So, uh, so again, the A value, it's going to decide whether it is going to be uh, right side up or upside down. Down. Okay, so uh, so we'll continue with the uh, uh, second point right here. Now the second point right here is to understand that uh, if we have the parent function, meaning the original uh, function for the absolute value, it should have the slope that it's uh, negative one and positive one. Okay, so. So now what we have to observe is that whether the, uh, the graph is a skinnier than usual one like this or a flatter than usual one, okay? Because that helps us uh, to tell whether it has a horizontal stretch or a horizontal, I'm sorry, my bad. I mean the vertical stretch or vertical compression. I repeat, uh, by having these uh, shape observation, uh, we can tell whether it is a vertical stretch or a vertical compression. So if you have a skinnier than usual, uh, skinnier than usual uh, uh, graph, that means your A value, it's going to be bigger than one. Okay, or you can interpret it as the slope, uh, especially the positive one. It's uh, it's the uh, it's greater than one. Okay, so you can basically use the slope of the positive side to tell the a value. Okay, we will walk through some examples later on. Uh, it's going to be very straightforward. 
Okay, now, uh, uh, but if the slope is flatter than usual, like the one on the right hand side, then we can tell that the then the slope or the a value, it's going to be in between one and zero. Okay, it's going to be a fraction that would allow us to tell that. Oh, yeah, that's the uh, that's how you have the um, that's how you have the uh, uh, the slope. Uh, that it's uh, less than one, but definitely greater than zero for the positive side. And since the uh, the negative side of the slope is just a negative of the positive slope, so we can just focus on the uh, the positive end of it. All right. So uh, so again, uh, this is a kind of uh, observation that you can have easily, and that would give you a lot of guidance. Um, what kind of A value you're anticipating. So, so far, we have been uh, focusing on the A values. Uh, for number one, we say whether it's positive or negative. And for the second one, we are looking at whether or not the, um, uh, the A value is bigger than one or in between zero and one. And now, last uh, one to pay attention for, it's whether it has a uh, horizontal uh, and or vertical shift. Okay, so now that goes with the uh, horizontal shift, which goes with the C value, and the vertical shift would work on the D value. Okay, so now if it moves to the right, then the C value would be positive. OK, let's just say it moves to the right for two units. So the C value will be two. However, if you look at the, uh, the, the original equation right here, it's, uh, it's x minus c. OK, so that's where you have to really look out for yourself. Because it's x minus c, so we could have something like this. We could have an absolute value that's moving two units to the right. And that means we will expect to see that it is absolute value of x minus two. Okay, so the C value, it's positive, meaning it's going to the right, but as you will see in the equation, it would appear as x minus two. So that's a little bit of a, a psychological uh, barrier because uh, when you look at the minus intuitively, you might be thinking about moving to the left, uh, but you have to understand the default uh, of the equation. It's x minus c inside the pair of parentheses. So that you understand, oh, yeah, if I see x minus 2, that means we are moving to the right for two units. Okay, we're moving to the right for two units if we see x minus 2. And if we see something like an absolute value of x minus 5, uh, that would mean that, uh, sorry, I bet, I mean, uh, I meant to say x plus five, that would mean it is uh, moving to the left for five units, because in this case, the C value, it's going to be minus five. And that's the reason why you see a positive, or you see a plus sign uh, right next to the X. Okay, so uh, that's something you want to pay attention for. And for the D, D value, it's pretty straightforward. So uh, if it moves up, then, uh, then it is going to be a positive value. So let's just say it moves up by three units only. Okay, so we'll say F of X is equal to absolute value of X plus three. Okay, if it's moving down, then we'll say uh, F of X is equal to the absolute value uh, of x, uh, let's just say that it moves down for four units, so we'll say minus four. Okay, so uh, that's how you will learn to uh, write uh, the equations uh, very efficiently and accurately. Okay, so again, so we have three things to look for. First, we have the shape, whether it's right side up or uh, or upside down. Uh, number two, we'll observe the slope. Is it skinnier than usual or is it flatter than usual? And, uh, and for number three, we'll pay attention to the horizontal and vertical shift and, uh, and just make sure that in particular to the uh, horizontal shift, uh, that uh, will appear a little bit um, 
um, differently as one might expect. So just make sure that you uh, get used to this kind of interpretation. So again, x minus two inside the absolute value symbol, that would mean that it is moving to the right for two units. Uh, if it is x plus five inside the absolute value symbol, it means that it is moving to the left for five units, okay? Now, uh, if you are uh, paying close attention, you might realize that uh, we didn't really discuss the B value. Now, um, now there's a good reason yeah uh, there's a good reason why we didn't discuss the b value as we are talking about the uh, writing of the uh, absolute value function equation because uh, well you can actually always take the b value out and then uh, merge with the a now the idea is this the idea is that if i have a function right here that is absolute value of 2 x okay inside the per, uh, inside the uh, uh, absolute value symbol uh, we can easily uh, take it out and make it a uh, two outside the absolute value function okay now how does it work how does it work okay well the way to understand this is that when we say this is a horizontal uh, this is a horizontal compression or shrink, as some may call it, okay? If we have a horizontal compression or shrink, that is actually the same thing as the uh, vertical stretch, okay? Think about this. Uh, if we have a function, let's see how good this uh, graphic would turn out to be. So uh, if we have a, uh, if we have a, uh, well, I can't actually just uh, move it uh, sideways, so that doesn't really work. So, uh, so yeah, if we are, so let me put it this way. If we have a horizontal compression or shrink, okay, that essentially is going to uh, be the same as a vertical stretch. Okay, so think about how you have a flower dough that you kind of uh, compress it sideways horizontally. That means the uh, the dough is going to stretch vertically as well. So, uh, so this is why it works uh, for the drawing part. Uh, it works pretty well. So you basically have one thing uh, less, one less thing to worry about. So in this case, uh, we are just going to assume that uh, assume that uh, b is essentially equal to one, so that uh, we can simply focus on the vertical stretch or vertical compression. Um, in that case. So for the next video, uh, we will go ahead and uh, analyze some of these graphs, and then uh, we will make use of these, um, uh, these uh, tricks or tips to write our equation.